Y'all getting bored of quarantine yet? If you watched the last video, you know that just finally when I got the buggy running really well, I blew one of the axles. Now, the reason why the axles did what they did, and I knew that this was going to be a problem, but I didn't think I was going to drive it hard enough to actually pull the axle out. Let me show you guys what they look like. Because we put the new suspension in, these arms have more extension down lower than they ever have before. So we've got our limiting straps on the way. In fact, they may even be here today, but I'll show you guys that. We'll put the limiting straps on. I did already get in these little nice little tabs that I'm going to use for the living straps. I'm probably going to mount the tab right back here just so it's real close to this support and it's just got, you know, plenty of strength. I don't want to put it in the middle and then end up actually pulling that together. So we'll probably just mount that right back there and that'll be exactly 20 inches from that to the bottom of the shock support. So we got everything finished last night. Let me show you the uh, completed project here. So you can see our straps are in place. Now I have approximately the same amount of air pressure as I did previously, which I believe was about 375 pounds per shock. The reason why <clears throat> I don't have a lot of um, sag built into this system is because I'm trying to overcome a couple of challenges. Normally you would want you know, to set your uh, sag under whatever the, the um, driving weight of the vehicle is. However, in this case, I kind of want the suspension to be on the sportier side of things. And because I've got way more travel on these shocks than I actually need, I have 16 inches of travel on these, which I don't even have 16 inches worth of um, travel in the whole suspension system on the rear here. I maybe have 12 inches. So what I did was I filled up the reservoirs with about 100 cc's more of oil than, ac than actually is the maximum requirement. So what that means is basically that oil that's in that shock, that additional oil, will limit the full travel. So I'm estimating it should limit that travel another 3 or 4 inches, which should put me in the range of about the 12 to 14 inch travel range, which is where I want to be. Now the reason I'm doing it that way is because I want it to get progressively stiff towards the end of the travel range. I don't want it to compress through the full 16 inches because if it did that or if I left it the way that it was previously, I would on if I get any air on the on the return, I would just blow through all of my suspension and bottom the rear end of the buggy out. And I don't want to do that. So I want to have, basically they're like built-in bump stops. By adding the additional oil, they should stop prior to this thing bottoming out. Also, that allows me to run a little bit higher pressure than what I normally would to get kind of a sportier feel on it. Now, because we're using the straps is why I really don't have a lot of built-in sag to this, which I'm okay with. Uh, it's not going to be quite as plush as if I had more sag built into this system, but once it's fully loaded with passengers and everything, I'll reevaluate the weights at that point and the pressures in both, both sides of the um, shocks. So we're going to kind of, you know, tune it as we go on the fly. But for now, I've got about 375 to 380 PSI per side, and that seems to have a good sag when I put the thing under weight. I've received the rebuild parts for the axle that we blew out on the rear. There's three different types of steel that's generally used for ball bearings and axle and automotive parts. Stainless steel, chrome steel, and then carbon steel. Carbon steel is fairly common. It has a high carbon content 
Um, the downside, and it's a very, um, very hard material, the downside to carbon steel is that it rusts easily. These, however, are 440 stainless steel. It is pretty expensive, but the main reason why I chose to use this instead of chrome or a carbon steel is because the temperature, the consistent temperature rating of the 440 stainless steel is much higher than chrome or a carbon type steel. Okay, so at this point, what I have done is I have cleaned and I have deburred anything here on this spline. guys so I this is so crazy and bizarre the way that I'm doing this I just had to show it to you so I determined that there's no C clip or E clip but there's no clips at least that are accessible from this side of the spline that holds this on so I could not get this spline off <laughs> so I had to get the boot over this so what I did was I turned the boot inside out okay and then through use of tremendous force and the right amount of lubricant in the right spots, what I did was I inverted it and slid the boot down over this, basically the star end here. Got to the end and realized that I still had this carrier, this bearing carrier here, that had to go through the inside of the boot as well, which was going to be virtually impossible considering how small this side is. So what I've done is I have smashed the boot down together and I'm trying to slide the metal carrier over the top of the boot. To say this whole thing is crazy, I've been working on this for an hour now, is just, uh, it, this whole thing is so <laughs> absurd, I just had to show you guys this. And I'm finally starting to make some progress here, where I think, see I'm down to the third part, where I think I am eventually going to be able to smash this over the top here with just enough force and, and again the right grease in the right spot so <clears throat> I will report back once I if I can get this done my goodness you guys you would not even believe it if I showed you how that was done that that could have been possible this side is very small compared to the rest of the shaft and you can see it fits more than snug on the narrowest part of the shaft which is right there somehow I managed to get that completed without damaging the boot without having to take the splines off I I have no idea how. So, okay, now we can proceed, put grease in this thing, fill it up, and start back kind of from the beginning. I kind of started one direction and then I had to take all the grease and the bearings and everything back out and then kind of start all over. Fire it up and see if she starts. The engine is running far superior to what it ever has before. The timing is finally right. All coils are firing. We were missing a lot on the last couple of test runs. So we were, we, the engine was dramatically down on power. So the fact that we have extra vibration and rev just means that this thing's running on, like literally on all cylinders. As always, appreciate you guys watching Dirt Gear TV and I will see you in the test run pretty soon. Thanks.